Hi guys, Robbie 46 here, and I'm bringing you a news update. Um, so Scott Redden, he it has been announced that he is a Mark VDS. Um, as I said in my last video, what I didn't say was that the bike he is going to be on um, will be pretty much full factory spec. Um, he won't be running the Nissan brakes and shall we suspension like the like Bautista's bike is. Um, I believe one of the production open class Hondas are going to have that set up. Um, so Scott Redden's going to have the Brembo brakes and Arlen's suspension which is good. Um, and he has got a two year deal with Mark VDS. Mark VDS have the bike for three years. So um, depends on Scott's results. Um, He's hoping that if he can impress um, and get some really good results, um, there's no reason why Repsol Honda won't have him on one of their bikes. But depends how quick Alex Marquez gets up the uh, the pecking order. Um, so anyway, that's the first bit of news. Um, second bit of news: Danny Kent. He is going to be staying in Moto Three. Um, he's going to be riding for the Kiefer Racing team, um, which for those of you who don't know is. Basically, the team that Stefan Bradl um, raced in in one two fives. Um, next year, Danny Kent will be on a Honda. Um, so hopefully, because it, he is um, heavier than other riders, he is taller. Um, so he does have a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to the straight. So hopefully, having that Honda Grant will will help him out a bit. Um, I do kind of think he has done things a bit backwards though because I mean last year he was in Moto2 on the Tech 3 um, team which isn't the best of bikes um, as we all know the best chassis I should say um, so I mean the, the season before he's in Moto3 and he was winning races um, personally I, I think he should have stayed in Moto3 last year as well um, because, you know, who knows, he might have even been fighting for the title. But because he's been into Moto2 on a bike that isn't competitive and then come back down to Moto3, um, he's had two years away, well, a year, sorry, um, away from the paddock um, and the bikes have changed. And uh, he even said that he's trying to use setups that he used when he was in Moto3 um, two years ago. Um, but it didn't work because everyone was going two seconds a lap quicker than when he was in it so it kind of done it a bit backwards but I'm hoping that he can uh, get the results he needs next year um, and then hopefully move back up to Moto2 just to uh, get a decent ride um, so that's that bit of news uh, Mika Calio um, Mark VDS have basically getting rid of him um, I kind of feel sorry for him really because I mean, he could potentially still win the championship this year. Um, and the fact that he this year he has been really consistent and just shown really good pace, um, hence why he's second in the championship. Um, but yeah, he could still win the championship and Mark VDS are getting rid of him. Um, he has signed with the Etel Trans um, team, which is the team which I believe... Um, Julian Simon and Franco Morbidelli currently racing um, so he'll be on one of those bikes hopefully he can um, do similar to what he done this year um, good luck to him um, and then the final bit well actually no, there's two more bits of news uh, Eugene Laverty will be in MotoGP next year with Aspar Honda um, because Aspar will be having, well, continuum with the um, open class Hondas. I believe the open class Hondas are getting up an upgrade next year. So hopefully they can be a bit more competitive um, or closer to the um, NGM Yamaha. So Eugene Laverty in MotoGP is good. I mean, one Laverty's going and another one's arriving. Um because Michael Laverty won't be in the paddock, but Eugene will be, so good luck to him next year as well. Um, and then, finally, yesterday it was officially announced Jack Miller is going to be racing a MotoGP next season in 
LCR. He'll be teammate to Cal Crutchley, but he will be on the open class production Honda, um, which will be, of course, upgraded. Um, it's it's no real shock because, you know, it's been rumoured for quite some time now. Um, so it was expected, but even still, um, I don't think he should be coming straight into MotoGP. I mean, if things carry on the way they're going, um, he's not going to win Moto3 this year. Um, he's just lacking that last. I mean, I know most of it's down to the bike but at the same time I do think part of it is down to him himself um, he's just lacking that last percentage to uh, to fight with the Hondas I mean he, he seems to be I mean he was happy with finishing third um, I mean he's been happy finishing an eighth as well which is a bit worrying um, because when you're fighting to become champion you, of course you don't want to be finishing an eighth um it's just a bit i don't know i mean i'm i'm not saying he's he's a bad rider cuz he he has shown that he's a really good rider he's he's got bags of talent um and he is a up and coming rider but i just think going straight to moto gp it's it's not a good thing um it's going to be such a big jump and it will probably just be high side city for him for a little while um and i know that the paddock are just really desperate to get another fast aussie into moto gp but i just think this is the wrong way to do it um cuz like i say he might end up in moto gp without winning any championship whatsoever uh, world championship anyway um so it's all a bit i have mixed views on it i mean my personal view is he should have gone to Moto2. He, he should have gone up with Mark VDS. Um, okay, yeah, he's tied down to a three-year deal, but if Scott Redden um, does move to, say, Repsol Honda, for example, um, when his two-year contract with Mark VDS is up, then there's a space there for um, Miller to go, uh, and that would be a, a factory bike, but... I mean, Mark VDS, they're a really good team, so for him to do what he done, um, I don't think he will ever end up on one of their bikes um, or get that opportunity. So he's kind of shot himself in the foot. He hasn't gone the best way about doing it. Um, I know that there was like a clause in the contract saying that if you do get an offer in MotoGP, um, you, you can take it. Um, but I just think... Moto3 into Moto GP, it's like going from a moped to a superbike. It's he's got a lot of learning to do. He's, he's got a hell of a lot of maturing to do. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna have to see what happens. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it for the news. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what your views are. Um, does Jack Miller deserve to be in MotoGP? Should he be in MotoGP? Um, I mean, of course, he, he would have eventually ended up there, but I, it's it's just too quick. Um, and yeah, if he doesn't get any, you know, decent results, then I I know a lot of you will be saying, oh yeah, he'll only be a rookie though. Yeah, but if you're gonna do that bigger jump, then you people are going to be looking they're going to expect some decent results um and we'll find out hopefully uh what the production hondas are capable of next year when they get their upgrades so if you don't get any decent results then it wouldn't actually surprise me um i hope he does do well though um and i wish him all the best but yeah that's it from me guys thank you so much for watching um don't forget to rev the nuts off that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more MotoGP news and MotoGP 14 content. And in the meantime, guys, I'll see you in the next video. See you.